Berkeley is giving students a unique opportunity to learn more about the shuttle program. It's called Life in Space. And one thing that makes the class special is the man in charge. As Nightcast reporter Sandra Stricker explains, he's had plenty of experience with the subject. Professor Larry Husnitz came to class dressed as a spaceman today. The former NASA researcher helped to design the suit he's wearing. Now he's teaching a first-of-its-kind class on life in space. It's a class these kids are ready for. I remember being about three or four years old and um, my parents sitting all the kids down to watch the first uh, rocket go up, the first flight to the moon. And they say, this is going to be history. And we've grown up with this, my generation. So it's exciting to be in on the first class to get an idea of how it all came about. Besides the spacesuit, this course will include topics like how a space mission is run, how the astronauts are picked, what they eat in space, how they exercise in space, and even how to fly the space shuttle. Okay, what you're looking at is a fisheye lens view of the inside of the cockpit of the space shuttle. Although Larry Husnitz has never been in space, he knows the shuttle inside and out. He was the engineer they called in to troubleshoot when those tiles fell off Challenger. He was inspired to teach, he says, when a group of elementary school kids told why they'd rather go to Mars than to the moon someday. And their answer was, because we've already been to the moon. And that is the single biggest reason for space exploration. Out of the mouths of people who are going to shape the space program of the future, Nearly half a dozen astronauts have already come from the UC campus here, and there may be a few more future space travelers in this class. I look forward to spending some time in space, definitely. I hope to do it uh, by the year 2000. I hope I'll be up there. On the UC Berkeley campus, Sandra Stricker, Channel 5, Eyewitness News, Nightcast. Africa, rural America, to the model of a modern American dream. Looking primed for takeoff, this newly built model of the Space Shuttle Challenger rests in the Berkeley Hills just outside the Lawrence Hall of Science. Earlier this year, it was officially dedicated as a memorial to the Challenger crew. The project involves hundreds of students, local merchants, and one dedicated teacher. Now, he may not look like it, but this is a spaceship designer. Can I call you that? No. No, I've been called, go ahead. I've been, been called a lot of things. Okay, this is Larry Kuznets, mm -hmm. and you designed this Challenger Memorial. Built it? Tell me the story of it. Well, it was a class. I had 400 students in a class on a space program that I'd always wanted to do ever since I worked at NASA. And uh, we were just generally discussing everything that anybody ever wanted to know about the space program when the Challenger accident happened. The class felt uh, an over, overwhelming sense of grief and a sense of uh, helplessness about what had happened, and everybody wanted to do something, but we didn't know what. So we thought about it for about two or three weeks, and then I had an idea that it might be a good idea to put the class in, into a organizational context or structure to teach them how something as complicated as a spacecraft is built. I'm frankly astonished. Uh, you know, I'm, I would say that it's the most amazing project I've ever been on. I feel more strongly about it than anything I've ever done, including my PhD, um, that students who are untrained, that a group like that could put something like this together is just mind-boggling. And the exterior was only half the battle. The internal structure was even more difficult to duplicate. Every last detail had to be painstakingly reproduced. Nothing was left out sleeping compartments, restrooms, even the spacesuits visitors are required to wear before entering. Larry, this cockpit certainly looks authentic. Well, uh, this was the most tedious effort in the whole project. We had to start with blueprints and expand the blueprints into, uh, into actual panels, and then we had to add switches, and then we had to add electronics. There are lots of little things that probably very few people ever know took the, the level of effort that it did to make it look the way it really looks. Do you think this Challenger program is going to be back? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, space flight is something that will continue because we're human and we have the natural desire to see things we don't know about. Um, that's why you're doing the program that you do. You want to find out and let people know about things that they're not aware of that are interesting to them, and that's the human spirit. And space flight, I believe, is the ultimate expression of the human spirit to, to find the unknown and, 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 and uh, live and work in it. And that's going to be our next environment. And this is the vehicle we're going to use. 
If you'd like to see the Challenger model, you can view the outside anytime. However, the inside won't be available for tours until a few final touches are completed. You'll find it next to the Lawrence Hall of Science overlooking the Berkeley campus. Now, if you're interested... In Berkeley, a former NASA scientist has created a life-size mock-up of the shuttle cabin. Tonight, there was a special memorial service at the site, and New Center Force Kim Peterson was there. It seems real down to the last switch, even to former astronaut Lauren Acton, who took his first tour of the model tonight. Unbelievable, and to think that it was done for practically nothing. You know, and these things usually cost millions of dollars. It's truly impressive. Sitting high atop the Berkeley Hills behind the Hall of Science, it's a memorial to the seven Challenger astronauts. This is a fantastic way to fulfill the mission of that flight, which was teaching children about the wonders of science, and that's what we want, and that's what we think it can do. A quiet ceremony today featured one of Christy McAuliffe's best friends from high school. I mourn the loss of my friend. It still hurts, but your work has made it easier and has given me a place to work through so much of it. Student volunteers did most of the work using original blueprints. There's a typical space meal, even an authentic space toilet. These panels are upside down for a very good reason. This hatch leads to the airlock, and this is where the astronauts come to put on their spacesuits before taking a walk out in space. It's weightless in here, and when the astronauts leave, they have to go out head first. So to make it easy for them, they flip head over heels, plug in their spacesuits to these panels, and slip out the door. And that's why these panels are upside down. And I can't believe it finally got finished. Yeah, I'm glad to see it's that it's up. Uh, it makes me want to go up. I wonder what it would be like to really go up. The Science Hall is studying the memorial's potential as a teaching tool. But there's no doubt about the feeling. This is what it must be like to fly into space. In Berkeley, Kim Peterson, News Center 4.